So here's the topic I want to touch on quickly that I get a lot of questions about, and I'm sure most of you may have these questions is about record retention and the Indiana requirements. All right. So one of the questions is what do I keep? So let's talk about what you keep. And I have attached a document for those of you at home, for those of you here, I've got it printed out for you. If you're at home, I've attached a document to this course on, uh, it's called What Do I Keep or Document Retention, what, what you actually have to keep. Now, I'm going to tell you that I keep everything virtually all that forever because of the way we keep it digitally. And that is going to be the part we're going to talk about. So closing statements, every listing and selling broker shall deliver to their document, to their broker's clients in every real estate transaction at the time that such transaction is consummated, a complete detailed closing statement showing all of the receipts and disbursements handled by such broker. The listing and selling broker shall retain these copies, so retain these statements for at least five years. That is a direct quote out of the Indiana rules and regulations. All right. So if you go back and break that out, you can see some other things in here. For first of all, it says every real estate transaction at the time such transaction is consummated. So if the listing say expires, that's not a consummated deal. Um, if the listing withdraws, there's, so those questions all come up. The question that people ask about is the timeliness beginning from the consummation date of the transaction or the expiration date of any listing that does not consummate. So you still have to keep those, uh, ones that expired, you have to keep that listing for five years and all of the closing from the date of closing. How do you keep them? Files can be retained in either hard copy or electronic format, as long as they can be expected during that four year period of retention. For those who choose to maintain transactions electronically, you will be required to produce transactions regardless of a technical matter arises with the technology. Clear? So what that's saying is you cannot blame it on the cloud. The cloud went down. Therefore, I have no access. That's not going to cut it. You're still going to be liable. Unfortunately, what I tell everybody is most of your cloud storage now is in redundant servers. And if all of, you know, Google's dozens or hundreds of servers go down at one time, there's probably other issues going on with the world that would make this less important if you get my drift. So I don't really have a fear of a server going down because I've got it stored on the cloud. We store all our stuff technology, uh, digitally through technology. The problem is, and we talked about this, a change in your operational strategy. One person closes 15 deals. You may have 15 files filed in your filing cabinet of all your closings. And right there they are. Now multiply that by 50. If you've got 50 agents, you now have over 600 closings. Can you store those all in your file cabinet, let alone for that time frame that you have to keep it? All right. So make sure that maybe your operational change has gone from we're keeping hard copies to now we keep digital copies. A lot easier to store 600 digital files than it is to store 600 hard copies. When I was doing myself and we had three or four agents, I kept them all physical. As we have brought on an office manager, one of his tasks is to literally scan all of the paperwork and store it on a redundant cloud system that we actually pay for every year so that we have access. And now I virtually can access things from seven or eight years ago because we still have them on digital. We do not maintain the physical file. All right. Uh, same thing with what else to keep independent contractor agreements. 
You have to keep those for five years after the sponsoring broker, uh, after they're no longer associated with you. All right, so you keep your old ICAs. CE certificates have to be kept within for three years. It is the responsibility of the agent, you guys, to keep your certificate. Now, our system stores your certificates for you. And if you've been with Real University for several or a number of years, you can actually log on and go back and see four or five years of certificates that we still have because we maintain everything in the cloud as well. What do you not keep? The commission does not require copies of existing public records like title commitments, loan application, lender disclosures. Uh, all of those are kept by third party people. We don't keep lending documents. The mortgage broker will keep those. All of those things that are kept by required by other people, the real estate commission is silent on that, meaning they're not telling you to do that. And if they're not telling you, that also means then it's not a requirement. There's a little note there. If you look up on the screen, it says, I was told story. When I was in the corporate world, we had a new uh, general counsel come in, in the corporate. Now I'm talking, this is a fortune 50 company, worldwide tier one supplier, auto parts manufacturing company, new general counsel. First thing he did was come in and have us destroy documents that were beyond the pale for the time frame. Because his belief was, if you do have documents that range back eight or nine years ago, and you are subpoenaed, you must produce them if you have them. So there is a downside to keeping documents forever. And I know people all the time that do that. If you are past the time frame, and let's say, just like the IRS, they come to you and they want to audit your 1990 income. Dude, that's past the time frame. I don't have the records. I'm not required to have the records. At this point, that system or the, the, this accusation is moot because there is no proof. However, if I happen to have those documents and the court subpoenas me, according to this general counsel, we had to produce them. So the first thing he did was go everything beyond seven years or older. We got rid of because he did not want that being subpoenaable, if that's even a word. Um, if you're an attorney out there, let me know if that's a word. Uh, he does. He did not want them being able to be subpoenaed for court documentation, although we never had anything like that. Just trying to CYA as far as I was concerned, that he wanted us to destroy that because we were only required by law to keep them six years. All right. Now, like I said, if you have questions, I've attached a document. You guys can see the list there of, of things you should keep and you can download it if you're listening at home uh, and put it in your operational strategy as to what you need for each document that could help you. So I want to thank you and I want to recap real quick. There are three types, three cycles that we're in once again, excluding the startup because we're beyond that. So you're either in the status quo phase, you're in a growth phase, or you're in an exit phase. The business structure that you have created greatly plays a role in which one of those that you could be in. We talked a little bit about the seven steps for a business plan to give you a better idea on how to change from one phase to the other, or actually execute the exit phase if that's it we talked about operational strategy as well as hierarchical strategy who does your agents report to but that may not necessarily be the same as your operational strategy we talked about the difference between a centralized management strategy and a decentralized management strategy and your actual takeaway from that is decentralized is probably the best in my opinion, we talked a little bit about, about the growth of technology and the growth of communication and how you should ramp up those uh, strategies rather than try and jump in at the deep end out of the gate. 
Talk a little bit about the physical compliance that you have. You have ADA issues, both at, as an employer standpoint and a access to consumer goods. Uh, we talked a little bit about all of the other rules, uh, zoning issues and uh, HOA issues. And then we've talked a little bit about the record keeping. And typically I just say carte blanche across the board, five years. There are some things that are three years. There are some things that are four years. And if you download that uh, document, it'll tell you. Uh, easiest way to remember is just five years. And you can keep them digital. You just do not get the excuse of the digital has gone down. So there are people I know that are paranoid about that. Um, so you might want to keep them hard copy. That's a lot of files. I mean, we've closed 400 this year. Uh, and if you talk about 400 last year, you're now into five years of 400, 2000 files. How do you physically store that many files? That's a problem. Now, if you have any questions, I'm gonna hang around for a while, we can do that. If you're at home listening and you've got questions, feel free to email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. I thank you for the time and good luck with your brokerage.